Okay, this is going to be part four of the related rate series. And again, we'll work a problem and use this uh, series of four steps to solve these. Now again, if you use these four steps whenever you have related rate problems, it will generally guide you pretty straightforward to the answer. Um, the problem we're going to do this time is a classical math problem, and it's called the shadow problem. And if you talk to any student who's ever had calculus, almost every student who's had it at some point runs across the shadow problem. And it's challenging, um, not because the math is hard, but because it's tricky to set up. So let's take a quick look at this. But again, we'll follow our steps here. So the steps are this. Draw a sketch and label all the known and the unknown quantities. Uh, then you've got to find an equation that ties all those variables together. Then we'll differentiate both sides with respect to time. And then finally, uh, substitute the known quantities and solve. So with these four steps in mind, let's take a look at the shadow problem. Okay, now the shadow problem looks like this. It says, suppose you have a man who's five feet tall and he's walking away from a light pole at the rate of four feet per second. Uh, the light is 16 feet above the ground. And the question wants to know this. When the guy is 10 feet from the base of the light, at what rate is his shadow moving? Is the tip of his shadow moving? And then also, at what rate is the length of his shadow changing? So with this in mind, let's go look at our steps again, and we'll run through the steps as we do this. So the first step says this. Draw a sketch and label all the known and the unknown quantities. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, now to start with, here are the things that you have. Um, we'll, and again, we want to put some unknowns. So what I'm going to do is to, first of all, the distance that, that the guy is from the light pole, we'll call that x. So I'll come down and I'll, starting right here, I'll draw this distance right over here, and we'll call this x. So x represents how far he is from the light pole. Now some of the things that you know, you know that the light pole is 16 feet tall, and that's a constant of problem, so we'll go ahead and put that right there, so 16 feet. Uh, you know that the guy is 5 feet tall, so he will be 5 feet tall. Um, now, the next thing I do is this, is let's actually draw his shadow on here. So you want to draw a sketch that gives you something to work with. So his shadow on the ground, and we'll do it in black here, would look something like this. So here are his legs, um, his body. <clears throat> um, if you come out here, here's his head, and we'll stick his arms right there. So that is his shadow on the ground. Now, what you're interested in is the tip of the shadow. So um, we'll draw, I think I'll go ahead and put a triangle on this thing now. Um, what will happen is this. We'll draw a dotted line from the light pole through uh, the top of his head and then on down to the tip of the shadow. So that's what a line from the light to the very tip of the shadow looks like. Now, a couple of other things that you can put in here and things that you know. Um, you know that he's walking away at four feet per second. Well, if x is his distance, then the rate at which his distance is changing is four feet per second. So you can actually go in here now and just add this. You know that the rate at which x is changing, so dx dt, is four feet per second. So that's going to be four feet per second right there. <clears throat> so you know the rate at which x is changing. Now, what the first question says is this, at what rate is the tip of his shadow moving? So first of all, let's figure out where is the tip of his shadow, and we'll go from here, and that's going to be all the way over to uh, right here. So if I go over, I'll put it right here, and that distance right there, and we'll just call this y just to give it a name, that's going to be y. That will be the tip of the shadow. So what the first question is asking is the rate at which y is changing. So what it wants to know is dy dt is equal to what? So what you've done here is you've labeled the things that you know and the things that you don't know. So right now, that's what the problem looks like. Now let's go back and look at the rules. So <clears throat> again, we've, we've drawn a sketch and labeled all the known and the unknown quantities. Now. Well, the next thing says is find an equation that relates these variables together. <clears throat> so you've got to find some way. You know, <clears throat> you know the rate at which x is changing. You're looking for the rate at which y is changing. So you have to find some way <clears throat> to tie x and y together. And really, when you work with this problem, <clears throat> the tricky part is finding uh, 
the relationship between these two. Now, <clears throat> look at the, if this is y and this is x, <clears throat> then this little distance from here to here would be y minus x. So that's y, that's x. That little distance right there is going to be y minus x. <clears throat> now, knowing that actually allows you to tie these things together using similar triangles. So what we'll have, um, <clears throat> let's first of all look at this big triangle. So you've got a red triangle here that goes 16, and then a length of y, and then there's that. Now this, and then a small triangle, it's 5 and y minus x, and this. So these two triangles are similar. So the ratios will be proportional. So what we'll do is this. Let's set it up as this. The height of this one times the length of this one, which would be 16 uh, divided by y, is equal to, now <clears throat> they've got to be in the same proportion, so the height of this one compared to the length of this one, which would be 5 divided by y minus x. So what we're doing here, just to go back again, we're trying to find a relationship. Let's go back to the rules. We're trying to find an equation that ties all this together. And all you've got to work with here are similar triangles. Now let's go ahead and solve this. So take this y minus x on the bottom, move it over to this side, take the y on this one and move it up here. So that will get you to 16 times y minus x is equal to 5y. So you cross multiply there. Next thing to do is go ahead and distribute this uh, 16. So you'll have 16y minus 16x is equal to 5y. Now go ahead and subtract 5y from both sides and Let's move the 5y on this side, the negative 16 over this side. So 16y minus 5y would give you 11y on this side. And take the negative 16x, move it over this side, it becomes a positive 16x. And then finally, go ahead and divide both sides by 11, and you'll have y is equal to 16 divided by 11x. Now what this does, this gives you an equation that ties these two things together. So um, we'll put a little box around this thing. So here is the equation that ties the two together. And let's go back to our rules. That takes care of step two. You found an equation that relates to the variables. Now what you want to know is how these things are changing with each other. So let's differentiate both sides with respect to time in step three. Now first of all, we'll take this thing and move it up here. So we'll take this and just to get a little more room, bring it up here. So you know that y is equal to 16 over 11 times x. Now this is what's kind of tricky on this shadow problem, is that the hard work is done. The hard part was this part right here, trying to find out how these things are related. The actual math is actually pretty easy. So now that you've got the equation, differentiate both sides with respect to time. We'll do that implicitly. So this will be dy dt would be equal to 16 over 11 times dx dt. Um, <clears throat> so we've differentiated both sides with respect to time. And that takes care of step three. Let's take a look at step four. What step four says is now that you've got it differentiated, go ahead and substitute the known quantities and solve. So let's plug in what we know. So we're Again, what we were trying to find here is dy dt. We wanted to know the rate at which the tip of the shadow was moving out, and there it is right there. So what we know, you need to know dx dt, but you know that up here, that dx dt is four feet per second, so plug that in. So dy dt would be equal to 16 over 11, and the units will cancel out on that, times dx dt, which is four, feet per second. And then finally that'll give you dy dt, so the rate at which the tip of the shadow is moving. Now if you stick that on a calculator, you'll come out with 5.82 feet per second. And there, 
is the first answer that you're looking for. So we'll put a little box around that. So dy dt is 5 feet per second. So that's what this one right here would be. It's moving out at 5 feet per second. I think I'll actually go ahead and write that up here. I now know that dy dt is uh, 5.82 feet per second. Okay, so what that does, that takes care of uh, the first part of the problem, part A. <clears throat> now what part B says is this. It wants to know um, at what rate is the length of his shadow changing? Well, first of all, what is that? Now, by our sketch here, the length of the shadow is this black part right in here, and that is this. So the length of his shadow, the way we've defined the problem, is y minus x. And we want to know at what rate is that changing. So for part b, what you're really looking for is this. The derivative with respect to time of y minus x. So at what rate is that changing? So that's what the question is asking for. Now, in a way, this one's actually going to turn out to be a little kind of easy. Um, think about this. We'll put it in red just so it stands out again. If x is changing at 4 feet per second, so dx dt is 4 feet per second. If the man's moving out at 4 feet per second, and his the tip of his shadow is moving out at 5.82 feet per second, then the rate at which this thing is changing would be the difference in these two. Now, mathematically, you can see it like this. So all of this part over here was part A. Now we'll look at part B. And it, all you have to do is this. You want to find uh, the rate at which y minus x is changing. Well, what that's equal to, that's equal to the rate at which y is changing minus the rate at which x is changing. And since you found both those in an earlier step, the rate at which y is changing is 5.82 feet per second minus the rate at which x is changing, which is 4 feet per second. So if you subtract those two, then you'll have the rate at which the length of the shadow is changing. So subtract those two and you get 1.82 feet per second. So this is the solution to the second part of the problem. This is the rate at which the length of the shadow is changing. And again, just use this little relationship right here. So you know the first one, you know the second one, subtract the two and you'll have the rate at which the thing is changing. Now, just one thing that usually causes students some trouble is this, is when he's, that you have this additional piece of information. All this is happening when he's 10 feet from the base of the light. Now, notice in this problem, when you took the derivative uh, right here, normally you might have an x and you'd plug the 10 feet in for x. But when you find the derivative of this thing, the x actually drops out and doesn't become part of the problem. So what this means is that regardless of the distance from the light pole, that these numbers would still hold true. Um, so in this case, it's kind of a trick problem in that you never really use this uh, 10 feet here. But anyway, that's the problem. So again, set up similar triangles and find yourself an equation. I'll just kind of run back through the steps again. First step, draw, draw a sketch and label everything that you've got, which is what all this is up here. Then, second thing, um, you need to find an equation that ties these variables together. Now to do that, you start with similar triangles and solve and you get y in terms of x. So now you've got an equation that ties all of this together. So there's the equation that ties everything together. Third step, uh, differentiate both sides with respect to time to find out how quickly they're changing. And there's the derivative. And then finally the fourth step is just uh, plug in the, the quantities that you know and solve. So in step four, uh, you know dx dt is this, plug it in, and there's the rate at which the tip of the shadow is moving, and then here's the rate at which the length of the shadow is changing. So there's the infamous shadow problem that always causes students quite a bit of trouble. And by the way, this thing actually shows up occasionally on the uh, AP exam, so you might watch out for that.